Frog, nice to see you here. And we have Kathy, delighted to welcome her to the stage. Welcome, that's what it feels like, a stage. And um, let's see, I think she should be on here in just a second. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Cheryl's here too. Hi, Cheryl. It's so good to meet you. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I'm really excited because today I got my. Ooh. I got my wedding ring today. That is very schmancy. Very sh fancy, say. fancy schmancy. Yeah, I know. I got married a month ago, and um, we had my ring made. It's got a beautiful story, and I'm just. I was real. I had to. She she sent me an email the jewelry store and said it's here, so I had to run and get it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm delighted. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's very exciting. Um, you know, you can always find love at any age. Absolutely. You know, we didn't meet until I think I was 41. And you I was 39. 39. Yeah. So well, we're, we're autumn as well. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's really exciting. And um my we he was actually he was gonna be the old fashioned go to the old fashioned way and 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 gift me with a ring. And we were all set, we picked it out, and then I woke up like in the middle of the night after we had ordered it and I said, you know, my mother, may she rest in peace, my mother left me jewelry and I've never done anything with it, and it would be so cool to take her diamonds that she left me and incorporate them into a ring. And he said, are there eight of them? And because we've known each other eight years. And I said, as a matter of fact, there are. So we took her eight of her diamonds and we made this ring. Oh, so cool. It's so very cool. Isn't that cool? That's, that's like your bundle week present. It's right my there. bundle week. Exactly. It's my <laughs> bundle week present. So anyway, I'm, I'm delighted that you're here. Um, I, I don't know if I've told you really in so many words, but I'm really a big, big fan. And I love your work. Cheryl, you as well. I love what the two of you do and what you create. And uh, you've been a big influence. In fact, I wanted to show you that I have two of your books. Oh, I was wondering if you knew about the oatmeal book since you have an oatmeal book in the bundle. I have an oatmeal book in the bundle, exactly. Because uh, oats are magic. Oats like literal are magic. magic. They are magic. I use oats all the time. For from I eat oats numerous times every single day. I make sauces out of them. I make burgers out of them. I make um, little balls out of them with uh, cacao powder. Um, oats are, are magic. I, I agree. And so, like, I figured we'd make a cheese sauce, but I thought I'd pull up a couple of other things, too, and show you. I know I got capabilities going back and forth. This is a little different than my normal multi-camera setup, so okay. people are used to seeing all the angles. I apologize. That's okay. But, like, this is actually an instant tomato soup with tomato powder, basil, and um, rolled oats that have been really pulverized. So you can't see much of them at all. And so I, this is an inst I have another version where I use um, powdered soy milk, but oats work really great. And if you go to healthyslowcooking.com or plantbasedinstantpot.com, or you get the 2024 Vegan Health Bundle, we've got um, Thriving on Starch, because Cheryl and I, um, did the starch solution we did dr mcdougall's 12-day program i'm trying to say i'm never going to find the actual there's actually the tomato soup is in here too so wait a minute you have that powder that you showed me is like instant you take it add water to it and it makes a, a tomato soup yes and you can get crazy and even add non-dairy milk and make it even creamier wow wow and that's from a, i did a mason jar soup class um but like in here, I've got 29 recipes. We also have some information from a uh, forward from Heather McDougall and Stacy Cross, who's our mm -hmm. health specialist mm -hmm. for that. But I've got 29 recipes. And let me make sure that I, yeah, the creamy vegan tomato soup, not this one, but the other one, I use oats and or cashews. So if you can't have nuts or you're just looking to take nuts out, okay, then you can do that. You can make it, I've got it. So you can do it in your Instant Pot, your blender, your stove top. There's so many ways you can do it. And then um, I have a dry bouillon in there. 
And this has is the base of oats with like spices and nutritional yeast and golden gravy, which is in there. So it's gravy mix. Wow. All of these are based on oats. Wait a minute. These, the three that you just that you just showed me, those are in your book that's in the bundle. Yes. And what's the name? And this is the cheese sauce. So like, there's a regular. I do a regular bouillon. Because when I did my first book, I was like, I'm going to spend my whole advance on bullion when I was using better than bullion back in the day. Like we all have at one point or another. And now it's crazy. That was 14 years ago and I thought it was too much. So um, it's so easy to make your own bullion. You can use onion. Uh, you can change this a lot. But I just cut up an onion, take the outer layer off the, the paper because it's not like broth. We're not going to strain it. We're going to use all of that. And so we do cut up the onion, put up some carrots, some chunks of celery. I usually put in some thyme, but you can do all different kinds of things. Throw it in the slow cooker, the instant pot, in a Dutch oven, in your oven, however you want to do it. Cook it down. I usually put it in the slow cooker. Then I puree it with some nutritional yeast, freeze it in the ice cube trays. It's ridiculously cheap. And then you don't, so I always end up running out of it during a class because I teach two classes a month. And so I always, and this is actually probably, this is what I should have picked instead of the cheese powder. I'm almost out. But it, it takes, I wanted to show you this too, because these powders, we all want to buy convenience food, right? We all want life to be just a little bit easier. And I just want to show you just how ridiculously easy it is to blend some stuff together and then have a, a big jar of vegan cheese sauce ready to go. Obviously, you can also take this with you places because right. you, you don't have to have it in the fridge or the freezer or anything like that. So before you go on, I, um, mm -hmm. first of all, I want to make sure to mention to people who are watching that we are part of this very exciting bundle. It's called the Vegan Health Bundle. And it's running from March 1st, which was yesterday, till March 10th. And you can find the link to purchase the bundle in either my Instagram profile or Kathy's, correct? Instagram profile. Yes. And you can find the link and you can purchase it there. And if you have any questions during this live, there's a question sticker at the very bottom of the screen. And we absolutely welcome you to put your questions in. No question is a silly question. They're all good. And when, once I see it, I will poke my finger at it and everybody else will see it on the screen. That's number one. And we'll mention that a number of times during this live. The second thing I, I want to just go back to what you said about the convenience piece of it. We all do want convenience. Sometimes I forget, even I forget as a, as a, as a health coach and B as somebody who's like super uber into cooking. So for me, it's not a big deal, but for other people who work full time, they have young kids or they're just not interested in doing the, there's a Yiddish word, the pachkiing that I like to do in the kitchen, you know? <laughs> so for that, for that, for people who fit into, under those categories, having these three options, the cheese powder, the um, bouillon, and the tomatoes. And the golden, and the, golden gravy. And the golden gravy. And I mean, it's just a no-brainer. And I have to say that I use and have used for years the better than bouillon. And Every single time, par none, I take it out of the refrigerator, refrigerator, I say to myself, okay, use it this time, but next time you're going to make homemade stock. And then I don't do it. Well, and it's hard. I, this is my opinion. So some people love stock more than bullion. The reason I like bullion is it's condensed, you know, so then it's an ice cube tray. So I put it in ice cube trays and I pop them out and put it in a silicone Ziploc. So usually I make enough for at least a quarter of the year for several months at a time. And it lasts for months. So, like, if you got a tiny bit of freezer burn on one of them and you throw it in a big pot of soup, no one's ever going to know. Trust me. And and I'm the person, oh, those green beans look a little freezer burned. Guess I'm going to make some soup. And nobody knows but me. So, obviously, be careful about food safety. But sometimes we get a little bit too weird. We're like, there's a date on the flower, so therefore now flower magically has a date that it's wrong. No, what what's happening is people aren't learning that, you know, there the more natural a product is, the more it has natural oils, like even um, oats, right? Because oats have natural fat in them. 
which is what also helps them be delicious. And it's a, it's okay, but that's what causes some of these grains to go bad. They don't go bad three months after someone stamped a date on them. You know, and so I get a little frustrated because I feel I worry about food waste just from having a number. Though at the same time, sometimes I worry that people don't check their food enough too. So I appreciate that gives them a reason to do it. Right. And then this is um, another thing. I've done this uh, live on Chef AJ, and I know you guys are like, you're just putting the same powder up here, aren't you? And I swear, um, this is oat parmesan. Ooh. And and so if you can have nuts or you're looking to avoid nuts for some reason, if you toast the oats, and I toast them slowly in a skillet, and you literally smell them. You lean over and smell them before you start cooking them, and that gives you like a little baseline to see how it's going to go. And as it gets toastier, it starts to taste like nuts. So I have in here um, toasted oats, nutritional yeast, and some salt. If you don't eat salt, you can use your favorite salt substitute. My favorite plain, I call it plain salt substitute because a lot of times you can get salt-free Cajun seasoning, salt-free curry seasoning, and you don't really want that on your pasta necessarily. And I do one tablespoon of um, garlic powder, one tablespoon onion powder, one teaspoon ground celery seed. I put that in a spice grinder. If it's already really ground up, you don't have to. I'm a little extra. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to make sure everything gets incorporated really well. Mm -hmm. And then you just use that as you would salt. Mm -hmm. And that hits some of the spots in your mouth. So hopefully that helps. Cool. So you just said it was a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, and a tablespoon or less of celery. A teaspoon of ground celery seed. And, ground, and celery seed actually does have some sodium in it. Not enough to bother anyone who is on a salt-free diet, but it is enough to let your tongue know is that it's there. Is that because, um, and, and I've heard that celery actually is a vegetable that has sort of a salty profile without having mm -hmm. salt in it. Exactly. Exactly. Because we forget how magical all these different vegetables are, right? Okay. Because they all add a little something to the mix. Mm -hmm. But um, but like sh and what Cheryl says is this is like the, the grated Parmesan in a box, the green box that we all grew up on or, you know, and at first I was a little insulted. <laughs> it's true and so like actually um i made a lasagna a compliant lasagna because i make my own soy milk and i save the pulp or the okara and it's really easy to make ricotta and it's free kathy do you think that free. you the two of you could just have a retreat somewhere like at your house and we can come and learn from you in person how to do all this because I have a soy maker right there in my cabinet and I do use it but not often enough and when I do I'm ashamed to admit that I do throw out the okara and that's okay it's okay we all did that we used to throw out the okara. and so I got this new thing now, I don't love that it's plastic but this put the bottom part strainer in here because I usually use a fine mesh strainer because nut milk bags creep me out it has nothing to do with anything real. So if you guys love your nut milk bags, you don't need to stop using them. I just feel like I can't ever get it clean, so it makes me uncomfortable. And this is like the in-between. And so what I've been doing is just pouring that in here, and it's giving it time, just letting it do its thing. And then I have some beautiful okara. I think I have some in the fridge. And it should be there where I can get it there it is yeah it's in the front and so I usually use a half a cup of soybeans soaked and four cups of water but like look at this what oh, okay tell us about that's that. just the okara uh, wait when did you make when's that from yesterday and what are you going to do with that I am going to put, and there's a recipe on HealthySlowCooking.com. I have two recipes that use okara. And I'm getting like twice as much okara now that I'm using such a fine mesh strainer. So if you're using a, a thicker strainer, know that you may not get this much. And that's okay. You can work with whatever you have. So wait, I'm just go backwards for one second. So you make the soy milk, and then after you 
um, take the opar out of the out of the the piece of it. You strain that in that plastic thing you just showed us. No, no, I pour the milk in. I just pour it right from the milk maker in here, and then what happens is then the okara stays up here. All the milk goes down here. If it's really thick, I take a, a spatula and I kind of almost do that folding motion. You don't want to really press. You just kind of want to move it. So you're clearing those little holes so more milk can come down is really what's happening. And it's it's pretty nice and dry. Like, doesn't that already kind of look just like ro yeah, yeah, yeah. ricotta? And I, and I want to get back so, to that in a second. So where can one get that? Probably Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. And I don't have it on my list yet, but I will be putting it on there. So if you guys want to know, you can email me at kathyhester at gmail.com. Um, but there's a bunch of them and I, I think they're fine. I just picked one. I use the Mia Mat um, soy maker. Oh, you can't see it. I'll bring it over here. I have a soy Bella. Oh, I, I've used the soy Bella. I find sometimes for me with the soy Bella, and, and I actually have a whole post on reviewing milk makers. So this is one of my personal favorites for the large one. It does not strain it, but it has a little cylinder. So it just, you can put more soybeans to water in here than you can in the soy Bella. Soy Bella is great. Yeah. It has, you don't have to strain the soy Bella. Right. So you, you're going to get a significantly less amount of Okara than I am Which might not from be a bag. That's a good idea because if I want to make the ricotta, I'm so fascinated with the idea of making um ricotta from okara and do you use uh, what are what are the main ingredients in it literally there's some lactic acid and we're going to use some um i don't have this in the regular thing it's just like a little powder it's neat even though this is lactic and we're kind of like wait is that milk it is not it's Hold vegan lactic acid I have some I, I oh good do you have the druids grow yeah. probably the bag that it came in this is what I and, have. Yes, that's exactly, that is, it, it's the same thing. Mine's just in a new container. Okay. Um, and if you taste it, it's almost citric acidy. It just gives it a little bite. Mm -hmm. What its purpose is for in any of the cheese um, recipes I use it in, and like this um, soy okara, I have a nut-free vegan goat cheese that uses this on healthy slow cooking as well as the ricotta but like you use a little a little bit of nutritional yeast a little bit of salt or salt substitute always whatever you hear me say salt just know i also mean salt substitute a little bit of lactic acid and you can go and do more like if it was a tofu ricotta typically we put like lemon juice and lemon zest and we're trying to get that this, the the lactic acid does a lot of that we don't have to trick quite as much because the soy okara already has that texture that's slight. It's not grainy, but you know, if you can remember, ricotta had, wasn't cottage cheese, but it's not super smooth and creamy either. So it, it naturally has this. And so I just made, I made a, and if you use something like the soy bella, two tips that you might want to have one is if you just have a couple of tablespoons or maybe you're using the arc mira a personal soy milk maker you could have a container like this plop your two to three tablespoons in here keep it in the freezer till you have enough to make a, a batch of ricotta right and is the, the ricotta, where's the ricotta recipe the ricotta recipe is on healthyslowcooking.com. I don't think I put it in here since I didn't tell you how to make soy milk. I didn't want to make it complicated. Right, right. And people get really confused. They And people, whenever they see the word okara, they always read the word okra. Right. So I was like, how are you making cheese with okra? I'm like, I don't know, but now I want to. <laughs> right? That's great. So um, one of the things that I, I want to bring up is that, you know, the two of you and me and all the people in the bundle, we're kind of cooking nerds, food nerds. We love everything food and we love everything, you know, the only thing I don't love is unpacking the groceries, but I do love everything else. And there might be people who are not that interested, like I said earlier, in doing all the food magic that we do in the kitchen. So the fact that you have these recipes in your, the, the book that's in the bundle 
for mm -hmm. making me shortcuts for health. And the idea is that they're healthy. There, there's no ingredients in there that you cannot pronounce, except for maybe Okara. Maybe. Right. <laughs> and you know now. But you know, you know now. But that's one of the Yeah, and like gravy mix. Like that's one of the things that I'm always trying to break Cheryl of. Cheryl's like, I'm gonna get some gravy mix. And I'm like, No, I you're do. not. So bad. No. But I don't have a brown gravy, but I will be developing one so that I can never ever buy gravy packets again. Yeah. Um yeah. When you know how easy it is. To oh, make. Cheryl, were my and Cheryl, you can pop right in there. She's handed me a note, like <laughs> like I'm, I'm on a fancy news show. She hands me a note, nuggies, and um, and and I did a milk pulp class, and I did make chicken nuggies with the okara, yeah, they're so good. and they're really good. And there's nothing you know weird in them or anything like that. You know what? As soon as we hang up. As soon as we finish, I am going to go and finally order. I've been putting off ordering. I think it's sitting in my cart on Amazon. I've been wanting to order soybeans. <clears throat> Do you have a special uh, place that you get your soybeans from or just Amazon? I don't. I get mine from Amazon. There was an organic place I was getting, uh, an organic brand that was available during the pandemic. I'm just getting Laura's non-GMO, and those have been working really great for me. Um but I haven't really had a problem or gotten a bad batch. Now with, with the other thing I wanted to mention with the soy bella. So a lot of people, some people, even with the Mia mat, the Mia mat cooks it a little bit longer. And if you're, if you have a soy bella and you're just like, it doesn't taste smooth enough. Maybe it tastes beany or green to you, like not quite all the way done. What I did over the pandemic when I was using it is I would then strain it into the Instant Pot and cook it on high for 10 minutes. And what would that do? Uh, make If it tastes too beany to you, it takes that beany taste away. That's not for an everyone thing, but um, but someone was, some people are very sensitive to that. Yeah, and I will say this about soy. I mean, ever since I, I used to not like soy anything. And I definitely did not like soy milk. And I do think for those people who are watching and are sort of on the fence about it, it like everything, it's an acquired taste. And eventually your palate, your, your the, the tongue receptors get used to it. And now I actually like it. I don't like every, every single one, but I do like soy milk. And when I make it in the soy bella, I find that there's a, a sort of a sweetness almost to the soy milk. I think it tastes, once you make your own, it tastes so good. Yeah. So, I mean, the, th the only thing is just everyone should know for, because you can make any of the milks. And also, if you don't have time or space for a fancy milk maker, you don't have to have one, especially if you want to make oat milk, you don't need a milk maker. Right. A blender's going to do fine because you don't want to heat any of that up. In right. fact, you want to keep it cold. And we use, and that, I, I do have a recipe for um, oat milk. I'll tell you the secret because I can't keep a secret. Use some ice. So usually it's one cup of rolled oats to four cups of water. If it's in the summer, I do three cups of water and one cup of ice. That's going to help keep the slime down. Another thing is don't use a milk make ba maker bag and do this because the slime is going to get pushed out. Use a fine mesh strainer. Can you hand me that? This is my big one. Big one. And you can, you can layer them too. But this is like a little double one. It's not as fine as this, right? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. It's really ob obvious, I think, that it's... But this works great. And I just kind of, again, fold it. Because oh, once you start easy. pushing, it's going to slime it. Right, yeah. Right, right, right. Cheryl wants me to show you this I way. I also read that with making your own oat milk, to not let it mix up in the blender more than like 30 seconds. Yeah, it's important if you're using a high-speed blender to not let it get warm. So I put the ice on it, and I keep my hand on it because if it does get hot, it, it is going to do that. Like even on the Mia Mat and some of the other milk makers, especially the ones that are coming from China, their cereal milk they heat it. They're not looking. They're not trying to make oatly, and you're trying to make oatly. So that's why, <laughs> yeah. And if you just kind of keep, you can always pulse it and pulse it. And it's okay if your rolled oats aren't like broken down to this kind of consistency. It's okay if there's some some pieces that you can see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so we should also mention just once again, 
um, that if anybody's interested in the bundle, uh, I, I want to make sure that people understand the amazingness that is in the bundle. It's, a, it's called the Vegan Health Bundle. And it's available for a very short time. It's available from March 1st to March 10th. And during that time, you can purchase the bundle. It's got over $8,000 worth of material content in it. And it's a variety of recipes and courses and video courses and uh, you name it, yoga. There's, there's all, a lot of different exercise programs. There's lifestyle. Just There's so many different uh, options in this bundle. And you get it for like drum roll. $49, which is like totally right. ridiculous, you know, one, one of the, one of really one option, well, not one option. You can just look at one thing that's probably worth $49. Like there's a course that's got like eight videos in it or something. So. Yeah, absolutely. And we have over $200 worth of stuff, regular price. So I have, so we have this ebook thriving on starch and then I have, a balsamic vinegar class, which is why we might, if we have time, we'll, we'll make a drink. And it's, it's really fun to play with those things. And, but then, because we were getting so close to $8,000, what I did is I went ahead and bulged up five classes. So I do two cooking classes a month, and my classes are usually four to seven recipes, two to three hours long. So you get the video and you get the PDF. So there's five of those, two sushi classes. There's a summer air fryer class, a chilled soup class. There's a lot of stuff. Is it, so, is it a membership? Yeah, I do have a membership. It's called Kathy's Cooking Club. Hmm. Yeah, and we're just starting to do a monthly Zoom call in addition to those. Mm -hmm. So I have um, a free heartbeat group that um, if you're interested in, and I don't know, it may be in my profile as well in Instagram, but if it's not, message me if you're watching from there. It's free, and actually when you join the free heartbeat group, you get a free class about I'm too tired to cook with really easy things to cook. And I made a, a thread in the free group for the bundle. So people are already posting pictures of stuff they're making for the bundle, and you can maybe find a bundle buddy and cook through some stuff together. That's a good idea. Yeah, um, I'll mention too that my I'm a newbie, so I have one entry in the bundle, and it oh. is called Rise and Shine 20 Morning Oatmeal Recipes. And I did that because I st my journey started back in 2011 when I went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I did that. It was a year long program, and I got introduced to Dr. Esselstyn and his family, and also um, Colin Campbell. And I just entered that whole world. And I really, I mostly dipped my toes in for a few years. And then I fell off the wagon and kind of went back to uh, standard American eating until about five years ago. And then I came back in, but with a whole different mindset. And now for me, it's not just about losing weight. For me, initially I wanted to lose weight, but for me, it's more about a lifestyle and a way to eat that's sustainable for the rest of my life. And also to really mm -hmm. keep um, chronic disease at bay. And, uh, you know, I, I highly, and it's also, it's fun. It's delicious. I never have any, like, I wake up every day. I'm like a kid in a candy shop. Oh, what am I going to make today? You know? Yeah. And there's so many delicious things. And like, I, one of the reasons I put some like cheesy things in here too, is because people are like, okay, I was already vegetarian. I wasn't eating meat. Now what do you want me to do? And it just depends on what part of your journey you're in, too. Um, but, like, for Cheryl, giving up mac and cheese was very hard. And, honestly, this looks no weirder than the powder that's in the bottom of your standard American. No, but it, it doesn't have anything in it you can't pronounce. No, no. And oh, the only thing I didn't bring was the tomato powder. And you could use something different. I do love me some tomato powder. And you can get this at Amazon. Usually I make it myself because I don't like cherry tomatoes. And I always get them. And I get mad at them and I dehydrate them and grind them into powder. I love that. Right? But you, when I was making this um, instant tomato soup, we wanted to have cups of it. So I went ahead and ordered a big batch. Because also, if you just even look at soups right now, cans of soups, like, expensive. like sometimes $4. Right. And the sodium is ridiculous in those cans of soup. 
And you can control this and you can make this what you want. So actually, this is my version of the tomato soup. Cheryl has her version that I need. Is that, oh, that's my answer, Chili. But, oh, here it is. This is Cheryl's. And Cheryl's has soy milk powder in it and no basil. She likes hers to taste like Campbell's soup. And it has been decided that this powder tastes exactly like Campbell's soup. Thank you very much. And then this one tastes more like La Madeleine creamy basil soup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you can you can really do these just the way you want. So like if I have, maybe you're like, I don't want tomato powder in there. Maybe you could put a little ancho chili. You can make this into a Mexican queso sauce. There's so many things you can do. And if it's okay with you, I'm just, it's not gonna take long at all to make this. We're just gonna measure in some things. Yes, I would love to see it, for sure. Oh, we do it. Can you see the blender? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, you have one of those beast blenders? I have a beast blender, and I really it's really great for powders. It's kind of crazy. Um, so we're just going to use some rolled oats to start off with. How do you like, and how do you like the beast blender? You know, I do. I find that it grinds the powders finer than my um, Ninja. Um, the Nutribullet? I have a, I, well, I have a Ninja, and it's actually a spice grinder. So I'm going to put just a couple rolled oats. This is so you can kind of see just how easy and how cheap this is. <laughs> and then probably our most expensive ingredient, we're going to use about three quarters of a cup. I can get this filled up of nutritional yeast. This is like an eighth of a cup, so I'm not going to make you sit through me you just putting those in. Nooch? You know, I didn't think I did, and then I had all this nooch that I was going to do a nooch off that I've been, I ran out, and now I've been using it. So, yes, now I do. I like, <laughs> I like um, the Frontier Herbs one. Uh -huh. I know it has vitamins in it, and some people don't feel good about that. Um, but I like the taste of that a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I won't tell you some of the other things we were using because that's unfair. Yeah. So I'm going to put a tablespoon of tomato powder. And that you can make yourself in the dehydrator and then just put in the spice grinder. But it, I say get get a bigger thing and make some tomato soup. We are. I'm going to do, go ahead because I do salt. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of salt. Most of my dry blends don't have it. This cheese one I do because Cheryl will make this on her own and forget to put salt in it. So you can totally make the salt free. Do you notice I put smoked paprika in the wrong paprika bottle? Oh. So now, and like that is my artwork of a fire. <laughs> if anybody wants to feel like they're a good artist, this is your chance. I'm going to put a teaspoon of smoked paprika. And if you are team, I really don't like smoky foods. Use regular paprika. I have to find a, a um, resource for getting re, uh, smoked paprika in bulk because I go through it so fast. I get big things at Penzi's. Uh -huh. I've got a big bag and I refill it. So I have lots of different um, bins of things like this. Okay, we are, I didn't get a half teaspoon. Here we go. Do, do, do. do you ever find, like, I have three different sets of things, and I can only find everything but what I'm looking for. We're going to use just some regular mustard powder. This is what's going to make it taste sharper mm -hmm. and more cheddary. So if you wanted it not to taste very sharp, you would use less. If you wanted it to taste sharper, you could use more. And um, I'm going to do a half teaspoon of onion powder, garlic powder. And my lactic acid. And your lactic acid. And again, this, and is, this is in your turmeric bundle. for color. And turmeric for color. This is in your bundle book. Yeah. Cool. And then after we make it, I mean, measuring out, this really is the whole thing. We're going to blend it and then put it in a jar. <laughs> so usually it takes less time than this because I'm not actually announcing the ingredients to myself. That may happen to me later in life, but right now it is not. Um, and what you're going to see, too, is you'll see some of this turn yellow from the turmeric, possibly. Sometimes you get a little bit of yellow in there. 
this is not going to make it taste sour, but you are going to notice it. So you, if you're not used to using lactic acid, you could tr start with half, mix it up, taste it, and then see what you think. Um, but it does give the kind of flavor illusion of something that's been fermented a little bit. So it makes it taste really nice. And Kathy, if somebody doesn't have a dehydrator or they they don't have where, that tomato powder they can get from Amazon? Amazon. And, you, and tomato you can get organic tomato, tomato powder from Amazon. Okay, do you, I don't think you guys need to see much more than that. Yeah, so no. with the, the Beast, you press a button in the back, it lets you go, and then... It, if you press it once, it'll pulse. Oh, I must not have it on right. There we go. And it told me I didn't have it on right. So if I do this, it'll pulse. I'll hold it. Longer than that every day. It'll go through a couple of cycles. The beast is on really good. Sometimes I will move it if it feels like it's going too slow. But do that at your own risk. I'm a maniac when it comes. Look at this. Look at this middle-aged lady and her lifting right here, right? <laughs> and it, this is going into a second blend. And it already looks pretty daggone good. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it. All the effort, people. How can I make this over and over again? And it's not quite as fine as mine is over there, but I probably would blend it a second time. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to be hearing all that, now, right? You can do this in any blender, right? Even in a absolutely even in a non high speed blender. Yeah, it just might take a little bit longer. And so, what I do when I'm making any of these mixes is I'm going to take a little bit and I'll put it in my palm or something like that, and I'm going to taste it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And how does it taste? Oh, it tastes good. So I can taste, um, let me get this up a little bit. We'll come up. Hello. Um, I'm tasting the balance of things. So what's interesting is when you have blends like this, because like I'm a big spice blend creator. So like this is my favorite thing to do. Um, I'm tasting the things together, but I'm also seeing is somebody poking me? Something kind of, you know, is there hair out of place poking up somewhere? So the first thing I'm kind of looking for and searching for is like my little mind computer is do I taste tomato, like straight out tomato? No. Okay, good. It's in there. You can taste the cheesy, which obviously is nutritional yeast. The mustard is not pointy. Mm -hmm. And so I sometimes I literally like just now, like you caught me looking over to the side, yeah. like what do I have? I don't notice that turmeric is coming out any Everything seems to be blended and happy. Sometimes it might be like that mustard's like, mm. or you might be, wow, this tastes kind of plain. If it tasted plain to me, I might be like, okay, we need something a little more. Mm. So mustard might be one of those lactic acid, tomato. Tomato has a lot of umami. Mm -hmm. So it's really supporting that nutritional yeast instead of it just tasting a, like light cheesy it makes it taste dark cheesy so I'm always looking for things that are like higher notes middle notes and lower notes and how it layers together I have a question first of all you're like a food chemist you have like a laboratory there and when you when you create a recipe like this do you how how often do you nail it on the first time sometimes you just never know um but you don't, I never expect to, but sometimes you do. Sometimes it's like, wow, that worked. I'm glad I wrote that down. Just the thing is, don't not write something down. I made chili the other night for a new chili. And I was like, I better write this down. I have a feeling. And it was really, really good chili. It was excellent chili. And if I had not written it down, because I put a little bit of this, a little bit of that, some of this, you know. And that's when we lose our recipes so much. And we don't want to do that. Yeah. And you know, so one of the things that I do um, I didn't used to do it. I used to feel like it was feel like it was sacrilegious, but I now write in my cookbooks. Oh, it's yours. You should do what you want to with it. Right. I write in my cookbooks, and what I do is I write notes actually on the recipe because a lot of times I'll make little amendments, but then also at the beginning, um, like over here, I will write what recipes I've tried. You can do it with sticky paper, I suppose, and the page that it's on, and then at least I can quickly find that recipe. 
Oh, I think that's a great idea. And here's the thing. We get a little bit too weird about the, like, this has to be this way, and this should be this perfect. And, and when I make recipes, okay, the only thing I ask is when you change all the things and you didn't ask me, it doesn't turn out right, it's not my bad recipe. So, however, my recipes, even since 2010, have had gluten-free, soy-free options. Everything but the first cookbook had oil-free options because the publisher took them out. And they put it back in for the revised edition. I was able to fight for it then. Um, as later books, I did salt or salt free options just because I want people to feel included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to know that this is your recipe. So one of the things about making this, and like while we have Kathy's soup and Cheryl's soup, right? Even in the same house, someone may feel that they need something really specific. And this cheese sauce, while I've made it kind of, I think, spot on for a mac and cheese sauce. Yeah, it's great over chicken pasta. We could add some ancho chili, some cumin, coriander, a little Mexican oregano, and turn that into something you drizzle over Mexican food. Yeah. I love that. I love that there's so much flexibility in your in your recipes. But, and there just has to be. I mean, the I have another friend who, or I know some other people too, so when I have testers testing for a cookbook of mine, what I ask is because I know they're not going to follow everything. It's just not possible. And I'm not going to either. So I'm like, tell me what you did differently, you know, and be specific. Mm -hmm. and, and then we can work into that. So a lot of times from having a great testing team, my book is better because I'm able to add their options right. in there. Right. And the key thing, if you want to start experimenting, and this is, is silly to show you now, but let's pretend this is a soup. And let's pretend, I don't know, this is, it's any spice you're like, I bet that won't go. It's usually what I do. Smell it together. Yeah, I love that. And your nose right. literally tells you yuck or yum. Your nose knows. And I think we make things so complicated. Yeah. And then let's say I did put the turmeric in there and I'm like, oh, now I don't like it. I can go back and add more oat parmesan. So you can keep playing with that. And sometimes I will end up with jars of stuff from where I was like, well, that one wasn't so good. Let's fix that. Um, but it's have some confidence in yourself. And let yourself play in the kitchen a little bit. And what I've always said, and even from the first book, like I wasn't a like seasoned recipe developer when I wrote The Vegan Slow Cooker. I had had a blog for two months. It, you know, the, the recipes turned well. Uh, the one before that, that was my second cookbook. Oh. But so I was working a full-time job. So I'd have like six slow cookers going while I was gone for the day. And with a slow cooking cookbook, then I'd, if it was a mistake, I might have to start again. It might take 24 more hours. So it, I understand it being difficult. And also, if you guys, I often hear everything in the slow cooker tastes the same. Everything in the instant pot tastes the same. And that's a you problem. Mm -hmm. And it's an easy fix. When you put stuff on the stove and you're making a soup, you taste it and you adjust your seasonings. You've got to do that before you serve right. any food made in anything. And then that will make your life so much better. Cheryl's saying something and we don't hear her. Oh, you don't hear her? No. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now I, I think I did. I can't hear her? Nope. But you can hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Well, maybe say, here. <laughs> you know, oh, there you go. Mixing, mixing everything together in some kind of, like, uh, instant pot or slow cooker doesn't instantly mean that it's going to be some, like, there's no magic that makes it all taste good. You have to still... You still have to season stuff. Just like right. Right. I mean, that's we. That's what you learn to do as a cook. You learn how to taste and t and season and taste and season and taste and season. You know, um, there's a um, uh, a Yiddish word. I grew up. I'm, I'm Jewish, and and there's a Yiddish word. It sounds worse than it is, but it's called shitarai, and shitarai <laughs> means a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know, 
know, it's that's what you do. You put in a little bit of we have a question. Can you make cookies in an air fryer? Absolutely. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Anything you can make in an oven, you can make in an air fryer. You're just going to cook it a little bit less. Um, and you can put parchment paper in if there is something heavy like a cookie on it. Don't put parchment paper and then put kale chips to cook it because it's going to magically go up and catch on fire. Right. We don't want Yuck. That. We don't like fire. Kathy, um, I'm, I'm going to ask you about, you said something before you teased us with a balsamic something. Yep. And I'm, I'm yes. Let's see. As soon as I turn my phone down, then I don't see anything. So you have to tell me if something weird happens. So I have these beautiful empty glasses. Got some club soda. I'm going to use a balsamic vinegar. So we're, we'll talk about some others too. So I'm going to be using a little bit of elderflower and a little bit of fig balsamic. Mm. Now I have some other balsamics over here that would also be good in a mocktail situation. Oh yeah, that, California balsamic, uh, love them. Persian lime, coconut, mm. lemon, strawberry. Mm. Those would all be good. There's lots of yummy fruit flavors. And another thing, I'm gonna be using some lime. You could use lime seltzer. I'm just out. This is kind of the magic of the Coke. What is it? It is a bitters. It's El Guapo bitters. And I want to show you some other bitters. This is a non-alcoholic, zero alcohol bitter. And these are El Guapos. Those are great. All the bitters also has a non-alcoholic bitters. Where does one get these? Um, you can get them online. El Guapo has a site. And this holiday pie, so I'm going to read. Let's see. Can you see that? I can't see there. Mm, yeah, maybe. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's bad. Okay. But Oh, it's backwards. That's right. Water, glycerin, sweet potato, apple, pumpkin, pecan, spices. Mm. And if you smell it. Mm. I can smell it through the screen. See, there you go. Can you smell it? Yep. It smells like pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. So the thing here, let me move this for a second. So I'll tell you what we're trying to do and then we'll do. Just like pumpkin pie. Here, come over. No, no, it really does smell just like. So bitters are something that's used in cocktails and it's got a little bit of. Mm. And so if you're not drinking anymore, for whatever reason, and you just are, you're just like, I would like to have an alcohol-free mocktail today. That and a little balsamic, a nice flavored balsamic, is an amazing treat. How did you figure that out? There was a big trend going around about healthy Coke on TikTok. And I still call BS on it because I don't think the one that I tasted tasted like Coke. Mine tastes tastes like Coke because Coke has like all spice spices. That's why it's like 80 bazillion ingredients and things like that. It's a lot of ingredients. Mm -hmm. These bitters really help. Now I am going to open up probably to put a little bit in this. You could use date syrup. I get this non-alcoholic mocktail box monthly called raising the bar where I get these beautiful bitters and non-alcoholic spirits and stuff and and so sometimes I'll talk about those and this is from one of those I did have a cinnamon maple syrup and that's going to be hard to find this time of year so what I would do plain maple syrup plain date syrup a little bit of date paste that you first go ahead and kind of master into a syrup type thing um, that's all going to work. Yeah, I was also saying if you don't have any bitters, if you have something like a pumpkin pie extract, you might be able to use a drop of that. I have not done that. Um, and we could do this a little bit easier. Now, let me get back down here. Now you know kind of where, so we're going for the cola thing, which seems mundane to us a little bit, right? Because we all grew up on it. It's like, well, I had that. We don't think that we've got lime in there. And so we're getting a citrus. And again, a lime salsa. And yes, I know this looks like a lemon. It's a very old lime. <laughs> it's still a lime. It's a sad lime. And then um, you would do this maple syrup just to taste. So probably anywhere from a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. Because remember, this isn't something I want, I'm telling you you should drink for breakfast, right? This is a treat. So um, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put about three dashes. You'll hear that a lot, dashes of holiday bitters. And this is what dash looks like, two, three. 
one, two, three. And then I'm going to do it. I'm making two of these. So I used about a quarter of a lime and we'll taste that because limes are always different. And we're going to use about a total of a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar. So I'm going to, this one is the elderflower. It is a white balsamic. And I found that the what this and the fig, and the fig is going to give it that nice dark color. Right? I see. You put a little bit in each glass. Yeah, I'm splitting the recipe up. And then we'll put our fizzy water. And again, if you're using a lime or, and if you have, you can get elderflower water, uh, elderflower balsamic that is a darker color. So this is a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just kind of stir this. I'm gonna give it a taste. And then we'll see what we need to adjust. Okay, so like the bar trick, right, is you take the straw, put it in, and put your finger over it, and you have a drop or two you can drop in your mouth. I dropped it all over the counter, but that's pretty close. <laughs> I think I would like a little more balsamic in there for the color and for the flavor. I think I could use a little bit more. But so when you do it like that, you can kind of taste it without, you know, so it doesn't taste like salad dressing? No, it doesn't taste like salad dressing. I think it could be a little bit sweeter. Because mm -hmm. you remember, we're not using much in here. And then I'll let Cheryl taste it. I brought some ice out, too. I think that's going to do it. And you just kind of keep making these small adjustments mm -hmm. until they're the way you want. So I've got, got some ice here. if you can hear all the fizzing going on yeah. but but it definitely looks a lot like a coke it's not quite as dark i'll give you that oh my goodness look at that <laughs> here come on and screen so people can see you and kathy you can do that with with bitters that do have alcohol if you do drink alcohol absolutely absolutely let's see how they see how i done really comes up and you might choose when you're doing this you're like maybe I want more more um spices so maybe I'll put a little more bitters in there so like just like we were talking about how you should taste it just for you so somebody's asking what was the name of where you get the alcohol free bitters um I get a box from raising the bar oh. but you can get this one is from El Guapo is the brand El Guapo. this is a great brand okay it's from New Orleans, and they also do some mixes, too. They actually have a vegan Bloody Mary mix wow. that's delightful. Raising the bar. So that's like a monthly subscription that you get? It is. It is not inexpensive. Yeah. It is my big treat to myself because I went on the McDougal um, program because I was having some liver issues. Mm -hmm. So not from alcohol, non-alcoholic liver issues, <laughs> but I was like, let's just don't push it right and I what I love is I love trying things in different flavors it's not really if it has alcohol or not so it's been really great for me and there's it's kind of the golden era of mocktails right now yeah. and so like yeah. I literally have a probably 14 bottles of non-alcoholic spirits from rums and gins and that's cool. I love that. Yeah. I love that because um, there are people like me who I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, I don't love drinking. So, but it's fun to have these different, I, I did try the, um, some of the balsamic vinegar with seltzer and I didn't love it, but now you're making me realize that there's, you can really doctor it up and play with other, other flavor profiles to make it taste like a mocktail. And mocktails are something that I'm seeing them, they're trending. I mean, I see them all over the place. Yeah, like sober curious is a big term these days. And what that means is people maybe who aren't in a 12-step program but just want to just, in like dry January, we just got out of dry January where most people don't drink. And think of it just like you would a soup or a sauce. And so usually there's the alcohol or this main flavor, and we're kind of using the balsamics to provide that depth of flavor. 
then something citrus or spicy or kombucha or a shrub or lime or lemon, orange, something like that. And then when you're adding these, these depths of bitters, like um, these are, there's a New Orleans style bitters and I'm probably going to mispronounce some of this, but it's like apple cider vinegar, spices, cherry, hibiscus flower, rose hips, is, how do you, uh, milk thistle, dandelion, burdock, ginger, and, and some uh, yellow dock root and things like that. So when you add a couple of drops of something like this, you really are kind of putting in that secret sauce like a spice blend. Yeah, and also some of the things that you rattled off just now, to me, I've, I've heard or read about them being medicinal. Bitters often are. So bitters kind of have a two-pronged path mm -hmm. from alcohol. Because remember, uh, there were points that like gin and tonic, tonic was actually a medicine. It's a tonic. Right? And so that's something to think about. I'm going to let her smell this one. This one has like apple cider vinegar, spices, dandelion root, milk thistle, holy basil, orange peel, ginger root. So each one has a little bit different. And if you smell it, see how that smells different. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And so that's what I got this in the box. And in fact, I went and bought a second bottle of this because I just, I just think it's kind of a delightful thing. Mm -hmm. If you can, it does have nuts in this one. If you can't have nuts, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just layer some things in like with this coconut balsamic. If you like pureed a little bit of pineapple, Ugh. put some of that coconut in. Yeah. Um, there's just so many different yeah. things you can do. Well, you know what would be fun to take this concept that you're talking about, and I know you're also you also have a ninja creamy course to take this concept of the bitters of that just that flavor, like taking that coke one and making a creamy ice cream out of it. Oh, you totally could. You totally could. Yeah, those better. Cheryl's right. The New Orleans bitters did help this a little bit because we're using a different balsamic than we did before. But um, and and this is the thing, too. Every time you make something, if you're using something different, it's older or newer, you might taste it and adjust. And there's no shame. But yeah, with the Ninja Creamy, it's really, really fun. And the only I think there's only one that has an option that's not whole food, plant based no oil, and that's because I have a fig blue cheese. It's obviously vegan blue cheese I found, and you don't have to do it. I thought it was delightful. My friends call it salad ice it's cream. Salad ice cream. Oh, that's so good. And, and then you asked if this tastes like salad. That's so yeah. interesting. No. But if you had that ice cream, yeah. that is so interesting. Like yeah. Salad. And it, I know we probably aren't drinking many colas, but there are some natural colas. If you ever taste one or your friend gets one, taste it and then taste this again. And you'll be kind of surprised because we our food memory for that is not so great. And I'm working on a new Ninja Creamy cookbook that hopefully will be out this summer. A second one that's going to be, they, there is some beans in the other one. So I have like a chickpea chocolate one in the original one you can get now. There'll be some more bean recipes. Yeah. There's going to be some more sweet potato recipes. People, um, there are some bananas in the other one. People are funny. They love them or they don't. Right. Well, you know, you can also OD on the banana ice cream. So um, one of the things that I want to try is making it with the purple sweet potatoes, making creamy concoction with purple sweet potatoes. And that should totally work. Yeah, I think that would be great. Um, It'd be pretty. I'm going to put a plug in and just tell you that if you need or ever in need of tasters or testers, um, I would be, I'd love to step up to the bar and be one of your testers. Oh, that's so sweet. I, I may very well take okay. you up on it. Right. So before we finish, um, I just want to put in one more plug for the bundle and let people know that they can go either to Kathy's um, bio on Instagram or to mine. Ellen Eller, Ellen's Healthy Kitchen, and you can definitely grab the link and hurry up because it's only available until the 10th. And the yeah. bundle has over $8,000 worth of content in it. And the content uh, is varied from recipes to exercise to m mind shifts. It's amazing how much uh, content there is in there. And so we highly recommend. My sister, actually, she was the first one out of the gate to buy it from me yesterday. And <laughs> That's awesome. She, she actually wrote to me and she said, 
she just was like her tongue was hanging out of her mouth. She could not believe the width and breadth. She said she's going to have recipes and content for years to come. Yeah. And if you if people feel a little overwhelmed, there's a couple of things, a couple of ways you can approach it. One, you can go ahead and get all the things and don't forget the courses. So you have a year to sign up and download everything. Once you've signed up and downloaded everything, you get to keep it forever. But like it's my classes that I talked about, there'll be a little PDF, but you have to click on the thing to sign up for the class in my course. So try to sign up for any of the classes you think you want. And just let them stay there. Save the passwords in your password book somewhere and you've got it for later. But if that feels too overwhelming, if like right now you're like, I've got a lot going on. I'm actually trying to get to eat whole food plant-based no oil. And that's a lot for me to think about. Look at the things like if you're a beginning cooker, go ahead and get a couple of beginning books or maybe really look at, get some of the courses. Like my balsamic class is really easy. You can watch it. You can cook along with me. The recipes are there. It's not all drinks. We can make, you know, balsamic soy curls together or there are other classes as well. And find the thing that's really interesting. Like I'm really interested in Drina Burton's uh, Vasha class. Yeah. And so find like three or four things that w that's still more way more than whatever you're paying. And then in a couple of months, put it on your calendar that you go back and you look again, because you're going to be a different person in October than you are today. Right, exactly. Right. And that person needs some more stuff. It occurred to me, actually, as I was looking through the uh, contents that, you know, if you if you want a recipe for whatever cheese powder and you go to Google, you'll get a gazillion of those recipes. But if you want to sort of condense it and be less overwhelmed, a bundle like this with the 150 contributions is a much easier way to digest it, if you will. Um, so I think that's a good reason to do it. So before we finish, I'm going to actually lift up my phone and I'm going to ask you if we can take a screenshot. So yes. are, are we ready? One, two, three. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to use that for the cover of the live. And um, I'm going to save it. And I, I can't even begin to tell you how wonderful this was. I'm really delighted that you allowed me to be part of your world and Cheryl's world. It's really, of it, course. you are, I told you, you're one of my mentors. I've been following you for years, thus my, my books. And, um, and I learned from you all the time. You know, the, the most recent learning that I had from you was when you did an, um, it was with Chef AJ and you went through the um the uh, what's the air fryer that uh, breville you went through the breville um food processor oh yes yes we did that and that's uh, and i got the peel and dice and it's like yeah, amazing yeah, yeah, i still yeah. have to put those up on my own yeah 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 i have watched that numerous times and i can't tell you how much i learned from watching that i mean i've had this i've had the breville for years and there were parts of it, blades that I didn't use because I was intimidated or, I didn't, you know, I just didn't know how. So that was such a helpful, helpful uh, video. Oh, I'm so glad because, like, actually, it was funny. I had a live for my people on Black Friday. And basically, I was going to have a live that Cheryl and I were just going to talk and, and just kind of chat with everybody. I was like, you don't need anything, blah, blah, blah. We're fine. And then everybody's like, well, yeah, but I really do need an instant pot. I'm like, well, if you need an instant pot, let's talk about which one you should get. And which, <laughs> so we're, we did all that. And I was like, oh, this is the thing I always wanted. And they talked me into getting the Breville appeal. And I said, like, you can take it off on your taxes. And like, uh, Marilyn, who's who's in my community, she's like, I was an accountant. I know you can do it. <laughs> and it was hilarious. But because Cheryl like, has texture issues. And so I went ahead and got that second dicing blade. So mm -hmm. it's really small. Yeah. And then I can do like Costco size bags of onions. I just cut off the ends and get the skin off. And you might have to cut it in half. You just go clunk, 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 yeah. clunk, 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 yeah. clunk, clunk, clunk. I and know. I just put it in the freezer and I, I have know. it all ready to saute. I know. I'm. It's amazing. I actually just got um, my husband gifted me. And really, I told him this is like the, 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 the ring is, a better gift for sure. But right behind the ring, he got me a new freezer, stand up freezer. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
And it's I, I literally, it came like two weeks ago. And every time I go down there, I'm like, oh my, I want to like hug it and kiss it. I love my stand up freezer because like everything's organized and everything's labeled. I can see everything. Can you come yeah. to our house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have one, and ours is always a hot mess because I, when I do a lot of classes, if we're traveling or busy, sometimes we will give stuff to friends, but then sometimes I save it. And then when our friends, aren't feeling well or something's going on we just like gift a giant thing of food yeah 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 but Um, it's out of hand now yeah i have everything according to category in bins and that has really helped. I just, so I have all the frozen fruit is in one bin. All the frozen vegetables and the hash brown, you know, potatoes are in another bin. The bread is in another bin. Um, everything that I've made that's leftover is in another bin. And I usually put the left, the soup that I have that I freeze, I put them in Ziploc freezer bags and lay them flat yeah. so that they become yeah. like thin. Um, although I am being, actually, I'm very excited. I'm going to be getting some super cubes. So, Those are awesome, yeah. by the way. Yeah. They are very, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about that. So anyway, um, big, big thank you. Big heartfelt oh. thank you to you for uh, being a part of my world, for part of the bundle. Cheryl, it was really good to meet you too. I love both of your t-shirts. They're adorable. <laughs> We're well, ridiculous and we love it that we way. Lo- oh, I love being ridiculous. That's fine. I'm, I'm all about that. You know, in my other life, I'm a full-time children's touring musician. Which oh, wow. is amazing. So I, I I do ridiculous really well. I, I like being ridiculous. In fact, I'm that person that when my kids were younger, like when they were in the 10, 11 years old, you know, we would be out like in Marshalls or TJ Maxx and I would talk to people, sing, and they would be like, Mom, do you always have to sing when we're out in public? Like, can't you just wait till we get home? <laughs> Isn't that the bonus of being a mom though? It like is the bonus. we didn't have children, but I would totally be that person. Yes, yeah. And I'm okay with that. So you you keep doing ridiculous and I'm gonna be right there with you. Excellent. I feel like you know, get what little joy you can out of tiny things that don't hurt anyone. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, all right. So I'm gonna say goodbye and it's gonna take me a minute, but I'm gonna get this up on my uh, Instagram, you know, in the grid and uh I will see you again. We're on together next Saturday, I think it is. Or, I think so. I think it's Saturday. And I have it all written down and I'm sending out, I've sent out the whole list, but yes. I'm doing like 30 lives this yeah. week. That's insane. Well, good for you. It is insane. So good you're getting me at least when I have a half a brain. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you both. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.